so in the, during the last uh, visit, not the, not the not last year, but the, 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 during the last trimester program, uh, Hirose, my collaborator, and me uh, found some nice reformulation of like two, three, two formula in terms of iterated integrals, and then uh, we spotted some really nice pattern there, and was uh, successfully realized that. Uh, very, in a very nice way, and at that time we were not able to solve the conjecture, but after some time we found a very nice viewpoint that explains all similar phenomena, including Zhao's theorem about, like, uh, for the multiple zeta star values, uh, which takes in a similar form. Okay, so let me explain, uh, so let me start with explaining the uh, original 232 formula uh, proved by Don. Uh, so, as everybody uh, probably knows, uh, multiple zeta values are defined by this nested sum. And these numbers are uh, recognized as uh, an important class of numbers uh, since it is uh, some very fundamental kind of periods, fundamental class of periods. Uh, indeed, Terasoma and Dulin and Goncharov showed that these numbers are all pe uh, periods of mixed state modus over Z. And there is some dimension formula for the, the motivic periods of mixed state modus. The motivic means it's not the, the real or complex numbers, but uh, defined as like framed objects, so something algebraic. And the, this uh, period uh, forms a ring and it's a graded. Moreover, it's a graded Q-algebra, and if you take the degree n piece, it's finite dimensional, and the dimension is given by this uh, generating function. And uh, as, but from this generating function, uh, one may speculate that okay, so in, case, in the in the case if 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 it happens that the multiple zeta values generate spans the space, the whole space, then what, what do you say? Maybe if we consider like zeta values at uh, whose entries are either two or three, consisting of two, only two and threes, it's the, the, the number of such MZVs coincide with the number of uh, the, 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 uh, the number dn, uh, if you consider the, K, uh, the weight n, which means k1 up to the class k and d to n, then so these numbers might be a, a basis of the space, and Hoffman actually conjectured this, and uh, Francis Brown showed uh, for the motivic uh, version of the MDBs, it's actually the case. And in his proof, one of the crucial identities uh, he needed to prove the independence of those numbers, so he needed to prove the independence of the, those numbers, and he did some uh, recursive argument that reduced it to the case when it only has three, uh, one, three, one threes uh, to in the entry. And what he needed to prove is that these guys are all linearly independent, and in order to do that, he needed to prove some uh, equality between the spaces, so the, the space spanned by those numbers are equal to the space spanned by alt single zetas times by uh, uh, even powers of pi. And in order to get this, he needed an, a precise, some precise form of an equality like this, uh, given an expansion of uh, those generator set uh, in terms of those. Well, on the right hand side, they are known to be, they are easily shown to be uh, linearly independent, so uh, what he wanted is this. This thing and okay, you have the same number, and uh, yeah, if you want uh, the, the the inverse uh, basis transformation involves a uh, coefficient with huge denominators, and it's not very clean. But this one ha uh, happened to be very clean, and uh, and he wanted to to exactly know know exactly the the numbers, and uh, don't. Well, spotted some pattern and 
he actually proved it in, the, in his famous paper. And this, these numbers are given by some binomial coefficient and uh, powers of two. So, so this was a, a very important uh, equality that was used in Brown's proof, and and thereby uh, it's known, uh, it's, it's famously known, and but somehow it's not very easy. There are different, there are alternative proofs for this uh, using hypergeometric series and sometimes like a, a, a eight f nine or something. But I wanted to understand it uh, in a simpler way. And during my visit in Hausdorff, I, uh, me and Hiroshima worked out, uh, so tried to understand particularly this right-hand side, because the right-hand side is a sum with some weird coefficient, and whereas well, the left-hand side is a quite simple stuff. So I wanted, we wanted to understand this uh, in a simpler way, and that's uh, in, uh, we, and for, for that purpose we need iterated integrals. So iterated integrals are uh, well, we are, it has been treated in previous lecture. But uh, what what is what what is it? What it is? It is uh, uh, okay. So suppose you have a complex under curve x and uh, a path, uh, let's say smooth one. And omega one up to omega n, let omega one up to omega n be holomorphic one forms, and then the iterated integral of the sequence omega one up to omega n from the point p to q, where p denotes the initial point of the path and q denotes the terminal point of the path, along gamma is defined to be the the integral uh, over the simplex simple and. Uh, uh, where you integrate those uh, forms, uh, pull back, uh, pull back uh, forms. And uh, the simplest example is when uh, the curve is P1, and you uh, consider the path from zero to the straight line path from zero to one, and uh, suppose omega one up to omega n is either dt over t or dt over t minus one. And in this case, the integral, the convergent uh, case, uh, coincides with uh, multiple zeta values up to sine, which was discovered by Gonsavich. And particularly if you plug 2, 2, 2, 3, 2, 2, 2, the one that, we, that appears in the left-hand side of the 2, 3, 2 formula, you get something like this. So it's negative 1 to the, to the a plus b plus 1, the number of entries here. Uh, times the iterated integral uh, from zero to one along the straight line path of d, so e one e naught e one e naught repeated for a times e one e naught squared e one e naught e one e naught again repeated for b times. And for a reformulation of the two three two formula, we need another type of path and another type of uh, differential forms. So let gamma 2 be the path from 1 to negative 1 going along uh, the real line, except uh, at the origin, you uh, encircle the, the origin uh, counterclockwisely uh, on the upper plane, and then you go to the negative 1 along the real line. And suppose omega 1 up to omega n is either e naught or 2 e naught minus e1, which uh, happened to yeah, very nice, uh, has a very nice property. And then what we found is that the, the right hand side of 2, 3, 2 formula, which was a, a sum of uh, odd zetas times some even powers of pi, happened to be a very simple iterated integral like this. So now you have like a2, a plus 2 uh, repeated e naught, after followed by uh, 2 e1 minus e naught and followed by an, an, an another sequence of e0 uh, with length 2b plus 2. And then you also have to divide out this by pi i. And the proof itself is kind of interesting. It uses the path composition uh, 
So, so you can compose, de decompose a path from one to zero and half circle, semicircle along the along the origin, around the origin, and then here you have another path. And the good thing is that if you consider that path, the, the contribution of the integral along this one, we have uh, the, you have multiple zeta values, and the contribution along this one is nothing but powers of i pi, and this one is the alternating MCV, but single ones are expressible in terms of the, the standard, the regular MCVs, and that's how we get those terms. And therefore, the 232 formula now can be reformulated as sim simple, very simple uh, identity between like, iterate, single iterated integral. So like this one, this one. And uh, furthermore, if you introduce some uh, redundant, somewhat redundant notation FAB with AB in zero or uh, either zero or one to be uh, 2E1 minus E0 when A and B are both zeros and uh, uh, 2E negative 1 minus E0. So this is dt over t plus 1 and this is dt over t when A equals to 1 and 1 and E0 otherwise. So if A and B are different, 0, 1 or either 0, 1 or 1, 0, then we define FAB to be E0. And then what happens is that, okay, so we have some redundancy here. Uh, so F0, 1 and 1, 0 uh, expresses the same differential form. But the good thing is that if you introduce this notation, this looks even nicer in this way. So starting, look, so looking at this left-hand side, you have 0, 1, 0, 1, 0 uh, for A times, followed by 1, 0, and then 0 repeat here. So it's like 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, and uh, uh, it's an alternating sequence of 0 and 1 up to here, and E0 repeats, and then again it starts to repeat, uh, start to alternate, E0, E0, E1, E0, E1, and so on. And the right hand side uh, uh, has a lot of E0, but let's replace it with sequence of <coughs> 0, 1, and F1, 0 instead of just repeating E0. And what we have is that, okay, starting from... Uh, should it be 2B plus 1? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Seems sorry, so this should be mod, mod, this should be negative. One. It should be an odd number, 2A yeah. plus 1 maybe, and 2B so plus from one. E0 and then speed. Uh, yeah, it should be, ah, sorry, sorry, yeah. E1, but the second right. one. Right, 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 exactly. Uh, 2A... Start with zero and then no two a plus two right here. Oh, a second one should be oh yeah right right right. Number, yeah. 2B plus plus, plus yeah, let me count so it's like two b plus one sorry yeah. this is two b plus one yeah thank you and uh, yeah so and this this should be one and this should be negative one this is a, the starting point of gamma two this is the terminal point of gamma two and well yeah so. Yeah, it's wrong, the number is wrong, but yeah, let me just continue. So if you write those E0 uh, as a sequence of E0 as E, F01, F10, the repeated sequence of F01, the alternate se sequence of <coughs> F01 and F10, what happens is that, interestingly, those like, adjacent ones are always equal, including here, where you have F00, this special differential form that appears in the middle. And interestingly, this 0, 0, the, re the adjacent ones, is exactly the same as this one, and 1, 1 is exactly the same as this one. 0, 0 again is the same, and even here you have 0, 0, and it's exactly the same as, okay, so these zip, the adjacent ones give rise to this one, these adjacent ones gives rise to this one. <coughs> and it's sorry. Have you broken the integral into pieces, or maybe because of the two e one? Because the first integral is an integral of length two. Now it's an integral of length one. Uh, or maybe it's a typo. Do you mean one and minus one in that gamma two? Oh, you mean here? Yeah. <coughs> one and minus one. Sorry. Sorry. Oh. Yeah, yeah. No, I yeah. thought that was some change. That's a typo. Sorry. Okay. okay. And this 
motivated us to consider the generalization like this, which turned out to be numerically true, and then we try to actually uh, prove it. And so this is now theorem, but conjectured in 2018 at AGIM during the trimester program, and uh, it's it's yeah. So the, the the statement, the generalized statement, is that for arbitrary sequence of zero one, uh, where a not is zero, a n plus one, the terminal point is one, uh, and you need some uh, convergence condition that uh, a not is not equal to a one. Uh, a n is not equal to a n plus one, which is needed for the convergence of the integral, and then it's equal to this integral starting from a not tilde, which just means uh, one, and a n plus one tilde, which just means negative one. But for later use here, we also use this notation <laughs> so that we use here. So anyway, we have those uh, sequence of differential forms having some really nice adjacency conditions. So A0, A0, A1, A1, A2, A2, A3, A3, and, and so on. And interestingly, this has, uh, uh, this, this has a, the, the, the length of the sequence here is one longer than this one, and then uh, the weight is not balanced, and you, you need pi i factor to, to make, make it balanced. And a special case when the sequence of AIs are 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, and repeat it, uh, the alternating sequence of 0, 1 uh, uh, for e, uh, odd times, followed by an uh, alternating sequence of 0, 1 uh, with even lengths, then it gives rise to the 2, 3, 2 formula. So, it's quite interesting. And actually, this formulation allows you to, to reformulate other uh, known formulas, such as Jowell's 2 1 formula, or generalized version of 2 1 formula, actually, uh, which is a, a formula for the multiple zeta star values. And the reformulated version looks exactly in the same way as this one, except we don't have this pi i here, and except that uh, one of the terminal points is infinity. So it's an integral from infinity to some point zero or one, and here you have infinity to one or negative one, depending on which point you take. Yeah. yeah. Gamma one previously went from zero to one, but now oh, in infinity. Sorry, yeah. That's uh, a typo. Yeah, it's a typo. Okay. Yeah. No, then no problem. Straight, straight line path. Yeah. Yeah. Straight line path. Both sides are straight. Wait, why do you need the endpoints? If gamma one has endpoints, isn't that implicit? Uh, rotation. I mean, the path goes from its left point to its right point. Yeah, yeah, yeah the, the, the left point, point to the right point, but of, of course the multiple path may be different. So, yeah, I mean, it's, some, sometimes it won't just. No, but if you if you write i sub gamma, why do you also have to put the endpoints? Yeah, exactly. The but the, the, the point is that yeah, just just, just for okay. example, if, yeah, sometimes it's better to, to include the endpoint to see that sequence. Yeah, and sometimes you like uh, you skip those uh, gammas. Well, not in the slides, but uh, it's it's kind of like notation that I commonly use because uh, sometimes having those numbers explicitly in the entry will be will look nicer to 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 spot the pattern like this. So yeah, well. I mean, if you, yeah, hope you forgive me about this notation. Okay, so yeah, this is this is uh, uh, the uh, the generalization that we found we discovered at that time, and now it's a theorem. And how do we prove it by iterative beta integral? So what what is the beta iterative beta integral? So it's an iterated integral of those differential forms that typically appear in the beta integral. So on the on the uh, numerator, it's just a just a normal like a normalizing factor because it only depends on x and y. So this is a differential form whose uh, variable is t and x y's x and y are just uh, just uh, some complex number. Uh, it's, uh, that parameterizes the differential form and alpha beta 
also parameters for, for this uh, differential form. And xy uh, specifies the singularities, the point uh, where this differential form has singularity, and alpha beta specifies its exponent, uh, the exponent of those singularities. And the iterative beta integral, we define iterative beta integral uh, to be the quotient of this integral and this integral when we have uh, the adjacency conditions. So if the integral starts from z0, z, z naught, the, the start, uh, starting point of the path, is, the starting point of the path is z naught, and the, the terminal point of the path is z n plus one, the first variable uh, of this uh, first parameter of this differential form has to be z0 and the, the last one in the sequence has to be z n plus 1 like this and you have uh, you, you impose the, the, the adjacency condition as before and what you uh, in the denominator you have something similar with length 1 and you have z0 z n plus 1 so there, you have to have z0 and z n plus 1 to have the adjacency condition yeah, yeah. So is, is this beta gamma even the period? And it's a quotient of beta. This one? This one is a period. Uh, this one... How do you prove that? It's not... Uh, you can actually write it in terms of uh, incomplete beta uh, integrals. Uh, no, 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 so you prove this for but how do you see that the right answer? You're dividing one period by another. Exactly, but Why you have... You can, you can express it in terms of another integral without any denominator. Okay, yeah. so there is a... Some... Yeah, right. Okay. So, um, yeah, and notice that these forms, in general, uh, are not defined on P1, I mean, a puncture P1, uh, since alpha and beta could be some non-integral numbers. But it's still defined on a branched covering uh, if alpha and beta are rational numbers, and universal covering always. And, uh, okay, so... And then, uh, if you consider a path, simple path from x to y, a straight line path, and the the and then the, the the one that appears in the denominator is a simple beta integral, the classical beta integral up to some um, simple factor. In general case, is it related to Selberg integral? Uh, Selberg integral mm, related, uh, not in a very close way. But maybe there are some ways to like include both of them. Yeah, some ways. But Selberg integrals have factorization into gamma factor, right? But this one doesn't. It's more complicated periods. So, mm -hmm. I, yeah. Where the alpha i live? Are they rational numbers? Uh, well, generally we consider complex numbers, <coughs> but at rational numbers, you have that the integrals become periods. So. Yeah. yeah, because you wrote a branch cover, usually branch is finite. Yeah, exactly. So, so for this, for this, for this, yeah, you need uh, okay. so, yeah, so alphas to be rational. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so there are, here are some properties of this like iterative beta integrals. Actually, there are tons of them, but I just missed a few of them. So it has a meromorphic continuation with respect to those exponent parameters uh, for fixed values of the singularities. And then most important, one of the most important thing is that it satisfies a differential, total differential equation, which takes exactly the same form as the Gontroff differential equation. And it's also <coughs> called this alpha fixed parameter alpha. And, and uh, here I uh, skipped gamma, uh, I, I dropped gamma because it does, so this, this is an integral, this is a quotient of integrals uh, starting from this point to this point and there is no canonical way to associate such path uh, with uh, to with this gamma original path from z0 to z n plus 1 and then it seems to be problematic but actually it's, it, it isn't because this doesn't depend on the choice of path whatever path you can take and this the differential doesn't depend okay and uh, uh, translation invariance. So this is the the uh, very the, the, like uh, intriguing property because for for example the Gonchar of differential equation already exists for hyperlogarithms, 
But this doesn't, because there is no such exponent parameter thing in hyperlogarithm. And this is the, the, <coughs> the main uh, mechanism that produces the uh, very non-trivial identities. Okay. So the translation invariance states that for a fixed z not up to z n plus 1, you can shift those uh, exponent parameters simultaneously by some complex number, and then the integral stays the same. And there are also relations between half logarithm. You can take the limit as alpha goes to uh, like 0 or 1, and it gives you the hyperclassical hyper logarithm. And particularly because of this property, if you specialize this to diagonal, you know, the diagonal value is constant because it's it has a translation invariance. So everywhere it's exactly the hyperlogarithm. Yeah, when when you have the, 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 the diagonal entries. And the proof of the the uh, generalized version of 232 formula goes in this way. So first of all, you have the translation invariance, which, uh, which says that B gamma, Z naught up to Z n plus 1, with the same exponent parameters, uh, is independent of alpha. Yeah. And then we consider the case when gamma is a straight path from 0 to 1, and Z naught up to Z n plus 1 is either 0 or 1, yeah, like this. And z not to z, yeah, so this is the first, uh, the uh, initial point of the path this is the terminal point of the path. And we compare two cases. First, we consider the case when alpha goes to zero. And then you get hyperlogarithm, like I mentioned here. And of course, it stays constant, so it is everywhere, this, this hyperlogarithm. But the expression you get might not be the same. So when you plug alpha equals one half, so simultaneous one half here, downstairs, then you have something like this. So, so the, uh, the iterated beta integral is an iterated integral divided by a like, single integral, which turned out to be this pi i. So this part is evaluated in terms of gamma functions, and particularly when it's half and half, then you have like gamma one half squared times some i thing. And the important thing here is that you have three or four, I, I should say, different types, different uh, differential forms. So one of them is 0, 0, 1 half, 1 half, another one 0, 1, 1 half, 1 half, and by the symmetry it's also equal to 1, 0, 1 half, 1 half. And then you have one, one, one half, one half. So you have three of the, the three differential forms. And one of them, okay, so let's say uh, this one is fine. This one, okay, let's go back to the definition here. So we plug one and zero, or zero, one, well, it doesn't really matter, I mean, it's a simple factor. And this is zero, this is one, and then you have t to the alpha and uh, t minus one to the one minus theta. And then, uh, so when alpha and beta are equal, uh, sorry, when x and y are equal, then what happens is just t minus x to the power of 1 minus 1 plus alpha minus beta. And when alpha and beta are equal, then it's just t minus t minus x. So that's why for, for uh, this case, it's simply just dt over t, and for this case, it's simply dt over t minus 1. But the intermediate case is something different. It's dt over square root of t times t minus 1, which is a uh, rational one form on the quadratic curve, uh, u squared equals to t, t times t minus 1. But here is, here is, here is a nice thing. So the, this quadratic curve, of course, it's, because it's quadratic, we have a it's a, it's a rational, it's, it's, a, uh, it, uh, it's of genus zero. So you have a rational map from P1, and it's given by this guy. And then by pulling back the forms, we have a rational one form on P1. And 
every rational one forms, uh, every D log forms in P1 are expressible in terms of E something. And this guy happened to be 2E on my P naught, which is exactly F naught, F did not naught, and uh, oh, sorry, maybe I should have, yeah, sorry, this should be, this should be 0, 0, 1, 1, uh, 0, 1, 1, 0, yeah, so, yeah, I'm sorry about it. Uh, but anyway, so those three different forms, okay, this guy becomes F0, 0, uh, 2E1 minus E0, so just a rational differential form on P1, and, uh, and this guy also, because it becomes <laughs> this one, it just E0, and uh, this guy becomes uh, 2E negative 1 minus E0, which is uh, the definition of F11. And therefore, the generalized uh, 2, 3, 2 formula follows immediately uh, from this change of variables. So, we have a very nice, simple uh, explanation of like, Don's 2, 3, 2 formula and its generalization. But it seems to have a lot more uh, implications because the definition is much more general and you have so many parameters here and singularity of parameters. Sorry. Yep. In the form, that, can you pop on that? Okay. One more. One more. Thank you. Uh, okay, I hadn't read it. It's for fixed alpha, so the dB is in the z's. Yes, right, right. Because you also said you can fix z and change the alpha, but that's not what you're doing. Right, right. So right, these right. differentials are in z, that's, I haven't seen it. Okay. So, what are the further implications? So, in order to understand it, we have to understand the structure of the proof, look into the structure of the proof. So, uh, let's define the equivalence translation equivalence of the parameters, yeah, simply by that, I mean, and then if you have two translation equivalents, equivalent parameters, the associated Victoria beta integral takes the same value. And suppose now that uh, we have two translation invariant parameters, and suppose that the associated curves are both birational to P1, both uh, of genus zero, so that we have a rational map, we have rational maps to this, to this way and this way. And then, since we have the translation invariance of the beta integral, iterated beta integral, we have this equality, and then if we pull back the forms by phi and phi prime uh, uh, respectively, then this side becomes um, a quotient like this, where fij is given by the pullback of the form dijj alpha i alpha j, and here it gets something, uh, the counterpart will be like phi prime, of, uh, phi prime uh, star of this, this thing with its, uh, shifted parameters. And in order to get such identities, we need to understand when those curves become of genus 1, genus 0. And it's possible to do that by using the Riemann-Hurwitz formula. And we, we classified all of them. There aren't so many, but there are still some infinite sequence, a uh, simple one. And all known equalities, now we're going to do uh, generalized 2, 3, 2 formula, including Giles 2, 1 formula for multiple zeta star values. And Murakami also found some uh, 2, 3, 2 formula, 2, 3, 2 like formula for multiple t values. And there are also similar formulas like that, like for symmetric MZV and so on. But they are all corollaries, corollaries of the, uh, the the great bare integral identity. And all these cases, actually a special case when alpha is just uh, half integer, and you have only two branch points, two, uh, two singularities uh, in the finite, uh, so it's so like zero or one. Okay, so it's a very already, uh, the, it already covers the, the whole uh, explanation of the, of the known formulas as a, as a very limited case, 
So it, we, uh, we still have other cases by classification here. <coughs> and it also gives evaluation formulas for, uh, like for the, the, the nested sum containing those like central binomial series, the ones containing the central binomial series in the denominator, and also the, the ones with the numerator and with some sign also, and all of them can be evaluated in terms of MPLs uh, using this iterative iterative identity. Do you have different alphas? Different alphas? Yes, there are cases when alphas uh, yeah, we, yeah, are different. Yes. The, the last form had a binomial coefficient in the denominator, right? as, as well as the usual. Yeah. This reminds me of the original paper by Aperi, or maybe even the form that you do. Yeah, and Aperi also considered the same. Sums. Do they fit into this? I mean, otherwise, I've never seen them again. Stilton said something like that. Yeah. Uh, that to, I mean, not, and Aperi, you have a power of, of this by, by not central by But have you seen something like that? So, so, yeah, you have, you have some multiple polyrogarism evaluated at Golden Bay Show for depending on like having a sign or not, you have some evaluation formula like that. And I think in the case of single uh, the for depth one case was treated by Apple, I think uh, he used some uh, so at least uh, when you consider one negative one to the n divided by n to the k and sorry n cubed times two inches to n is exactly the series that appeared in uh, Apple's brief. So that's fit. Uh, uh, so by, so by how, how general is that? You, is there a whole? Because this looks very different from a multiple zeta value. So is there something, a class of functions that involves both powers and multinomial coefficients, or just this one? Uh, not only this one. There are several uh, <laughs> several cases no. where you can evaluate it. I mean, this this, this is just a special this is just a special instance of the, the general one. And in general, you have some. Uh, like hypergeometric like series, uh, multiple version of the hypergeometric like series, and then uh, there are some identities between that. And if you have some situation like like this, you have uh, different uh, expressions for yeah, different uh, for for the, for the shifted integrals. And yeah, it's not only this one. This is actually the case when alpha are all one half. Anyway, so um, what about other cases? Is there any interesting cases? So the most interesting cases are actually the case with three branch points. And let's, let's say that the three branch points are P1, P2, and P3. Then the, the, the yeah, so we spe specialize the upstairs variable uh, to those three points and suppose the, the, the downstairs is all one half. I mean, we have other cases where alphas are different, but anyway, so let's go in this case first. And then in this case, um, the uh, associated curve is given by this guy and it's cubic divided by uh, degree one, you know, linear stuff, but actually this cancels out with one of the factors. And just for, yeah, uh, saving some space, I use this notation. So it's it just saying you have system of equations u1 squared equals to t minus p2 times t minus p3, u2 squared is t minus p1 times t minus p3, u3 squared is equal to t1, uh, t minus p1 times t minus p2. So this is the system. And in this case, you have a very uh, nice, uh, also you have a very nice uh, uh, rational map from P1, and it's given by something like this. It's a little bit complicated. You have like T minus Pj here, and it, in the numerator, we have some quadratic expression in C, including Pi's. And then the, uh, the, the form, is obtained as a fullback uh, is d log of some rational function in C. And when i is j, so it's like when, when uh, you consider f, p, i, p, i, 
then you have something a little bit complicated. You have some quadratic polynomial squared divided by the three linear factors. But when p i and p j are different, you have only linear factors, two divided by one. And they're all rational one forms of p1, uh, p1, p1, and uh, you get this exactly the same type of uh, equality uh, from this case, because we specialized one half and one half, and the, uh, the denominator is only pi i. And this gives the generalization of 232 formula uh, as you, if you consider uh, the, the case when p2 and p3 are, for example, equal, then it just, uh, reduces down to the, to the previous case. But uh, yeah, interestingly, so in this case, it's not just about MCV identity, it contains one variable because p1, p2, and p3 are generic. And by uh, automorphism of P1, you can move two points, but I mean, infinity is fixed. So you can only move two points, and the, the rest is a full variable. It's a variable. So we have an, some interesting identity between a uh, polylogarithm with one variable, in this case. And I, in, the, in the end of the talk, I would like to mention there, uh, about one uh, application that uh, popped up uh, during my last visit in, in Bonn uh, last year uh, during the Better Forum. Uh, I had some discussion with uh, Stephen, yeah, and uh, yeah, he, uh, when I gave a talk about this iterative beta integral thing, he mentioned that uh, there might be some connection between uh, the problem he's doing at that, uh, at that moment. And uh, that was about uh, laws on surface, and uh, which is and a special uh, class of them, uh, like this. So it's a it's a curve. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a curve given by y uh, y, uh, y to the g plus one equals to this guy, and uh, what he was studying is the there was a Wilmore energy and Wilmore uh, the area of the surface embedded inside uh, this three sphere, and uh, for example, when so this, I, I just picked this from their paper, uh, and uh, when g is nine, the loss on surface looks like this, and when g increases, the number of those holes increases, and in the end, as a limit, it just becomes uh, two uh, like two spheres uh, intersecting along this uh, this line. And they established an algorithm. For, for the computation of area and the Wilmore energy, they are also related closely, closely. And the area particularly is given by 8 pi times some Taylor series in 1 divided by 2g plus 2. And the coefficients were given by something they call omega values. And the omega values are hyperlogarithm from zero, uh, integrated integral hyperlogarithm, uh, uh, integrating from 0 to 1 with three uh, differential forms like this, having uh, poles of uh, uh, eight root of unities. Well, why do you write this argument in such a complicated way? It's just t squared minus i over t squared plus i. It seems much simpler. Uh, I mean, the fun no, no, sure. row, row to the fifth is minus row. Yeah, row yeah, 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 yeah. So it's t squared minus row squared plus t squared minus i. Yeah. Divided by t squared plus i, that's much easier. Yeah, just, just, to, just to show that you are considering all combinations 1, 5, 2, 3, 7, and yeah, 1, 3, mm -hmm. like 5, 7. Yeah, well, of course, it's possible to write it like this. But yeah, since. Oh, sorry, but the others don't have that problem. It's only on for 1. And then, so the other ones, you can't do that. The two can say it doesn't work. Yeah, so yeah, that's, that's the thing. Okay, so. Uh, by the algorithm, they all, all, all computed that the first coefficient a1, so there are only coefficients for odd uh, 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 else, and the first coefficient a1 uh, was found to be log 2, and a3, they also get some uh, expression for a3, which was given by this thing, and abc are 
so complicated. <laughs> <laughs> but Stephen somehow found some pattern and he tried to simplify it in this way. So A is a cube of this guy, B is a product of those. Well, it's still a little bit complicated, but you have it's more manageable. And you have some coefficients like 2A8, 4A8, and so on. And then he brute forcefully computed those <laughs> yeah, values, which contains, sometimes contains log 2, but in the end, log 2 terms all cancel, cancel out, and A3 turned out to be 9 divided by 4 times. <laughs> <laughs> and in, he, 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 he observed some nice patterns here, and actually, uh, for the simplified expression like this, yeah, it seems that he can do it for higher coefficients, and it seems that the, the omega values you really need are only those with the entries, with the, uh, the uh, indices, like 3 or 2, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 1, 1, 3, 3, 3, 2, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, 3, and so on. And it looks, it, yeah, so we found some complicated rule, but I will talk about it right after now. Okay, so wait a minute. So, and it, yeah, actually, yeah, you have those, like, you, you only see those things, and they are... Well, because of the top right <laughs> 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 yeah. And he speculated, so he said a conjecture uh, that if, if those uh, indices, uh, if, the, uh, if the indices, if the index it belongs to this set, then the associated omega value is expressive, it sits in the space of alternating MCVs. So there is some descent happens, Galois descending happens, and although this integral, original integral, involves uh, differential forms uh, whose, whose uh, poles are at the eight root of unities, it end up with something much, much simpler and that sits in a much smaller space. This is, let's say, this is omega conjecture of Charlton. And there are two questions. So what is those indices? Yeah, like Don asked me. And uh, why this happens? So during my, uh, during my stay last year, I spotted the pattern here and it's explained in a very simple way. So my observation is that it's actually, okay, you first draw a triangle and uh, let's level the vertices as P1, P2, P3, and then level the, the, uh, the, the size, the S2, 1, 2, 3, in this way. And then the sequence is exactly sequence exactly corresponds to the path from P2 to P3 in n step, if it's a sequence of n steps. So, for example, there's only one uh, path of length 1. You can go this way, 3, and that appeared here. Yeah. And the next one, 2, 1, and this is the way, and there's no other ways. But for the length 3 case, you have two uh, patterns 2, 2, 3, and 3, 1, 1, oh, no, three patterns 2, 2, 3, 3, 1, 1, and 3, 3, 3, and actually, yeah, 2, 2, 3, you know, <coughs> go back and then go to P3, 2, 2, 3, and uh, 2, and where was that? Uh, 3, 1, 1, okay, 3, 1, 1, and then 3, 3, 3. And it explains the whole pattern. It turned out to explain the whole pattern. Yeah. You don't care that 3, 3, 3, you're going backwards one time. It's not oriented. Uh, it's, it's not oriented. You can just go back along the... Yeah. I mean, if you cannot take the path... Yeah, so... So, you, so like 3, 3, 3, you go back and forth. Yeah, go back and forth. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. And the last one should be 2, or from uh, P1 to P1? Oh, this one should be 2. Yeah, right, right. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not in your list. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so <laughs> <laughs> that's a little bit. My example was in the okay, so that's yeah. 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 No, it should no, go to P3. It should go to P3. Yeah. 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 So yeah. it yeah. yeah. corresponds to the last one to the three. Oh, yeah, it should go to P3, exactly. It should go to P3. So P1 to P3 means one. Okay, so this was a type of. 
This was a typo. Yeah. yeah. So, the index zero belongs to. Hi, <laughs> Omega. Yeah, so, uh, how can we uh, understand this? So, how, why, why is this the case? It, it is explained very uh, simply by the literary beta integral setup. So, consider the case when p of p1 and p of p3 are negative 1, 0, 1. In the previous theorem, we go back to, to the sky, uh, p1, p2, p3. And then, uh, yeah, let's see. This one is a little bit complicated. You have quadratic polynomial, usually irreducible <coughs> over directionals, uh, squared. But this one is super simple. It's just uh, like d log plus d log plus minus d log. I mean, yeah, it's very, it's like linear combination of three e's, which seems to be similar to this situation. So if you take, uh, so in this case you have four poles, make uh, the row, 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 a row cube, row to the five, row to the seven, but the previous one also because in, uh, uh, aside from p1, p2, p3, we have infinity. So somehow if we uh, apply the Mabius transformation, which may match to this picture, and it did actually. So. Look at it. Yeah, so by this Mavis transformation, infinity negative one zero one goes to exactly uh, row, row cube, row to the five, row to the seven. And then those uh, quadratic polynomial, uh, the roots of the quadratic polynomials uh, also map to something simple here, uh, plus minus i, zero infinity, and plus minus i, come on. And the differential forms transforms uh, as so those that like we have, in, in this case, we have six differential forms uh, whose, subs, uh, whose indices are a pair of numbers in, uh, in, which are either zero, one, or negative one, and it has a symmetry. So we have six of them. And particularly if you consider the case when the indices are different, I mean, the two, two entries here are different, negative one, one, or uh, zero, negative one, or one, zero, and by the symmetry also those, they exactly become the, my, the negative omega one, negative omega two, negative omega three, which is the differential form that appear in omega values. And, okay, renaming those as g naught, g negative one, g one, or just for convenience of description, what happens is that these the sequence that appeared, okay, so 2, 1, 3, 3, 1, 1, fortunately, was the correct example, and the, the uh, corresponding uh, uh, integral is like this one, omega 2, omega 1, omega 3, 3, uh, 1, 1, and they become g negative 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, and then you can see it in this way, so negative 1 is 0 plus negative 1, 1, 0, negative is negative 1, <coughs> One, uh, one is one plus zero. In this way, you see that zero, so, so some like adjacent patterns here appears. And this, uh, by, by the uh, iterative beta integral identity, this uh, is exactly the, uh, the alternating MCV uh, defined by the iterated integral from zero to one. Uh, whose entries are negative one, uh, sorry, e negative one, e one, e naught, e one, e negative one. So it's dt over t plus one, dt over t minus one, and this is dt over two. And this, uh, the, the sequence here is just converted in, in this way. So zero, zero becomes here, and zero, negative one, negative one become, uh, goes to here, one, one goes to here, zero, zero goes to zero. Yes. And in this way, all the all, all, uh, all indices that belong to this i omega uh, perfectly fits in the picture of uh, uh, iterative beta integral, and hence the his speculation was correct. Okay, so and in, yeah, so in general we have this Charlton conjecture, 
And uh, during, my, that during my stay this time, I am planning to discuss uh, the general uh, coefficient. Uh, we try to find some spot, some uh, pattern for the general coefficient, higher coefficient, uh, by rewriting those coefficients in, in those things. And hopefully we get something. Okay, thank you so much for your attention.